final enemy base is under attack. I'm under fire. Request the port. Over. We've reduced an enemy structure to rubble. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, if you are not a new player or if you uh, really know anything about the game, this video is not for you. Uh, this is for people that are new to the game or are just looking for a brief overview of the UNSC faction uh, uh, overall. Uh, but if you want to sit here and watch it anyway, be my guest. I just wanted to give you a quick warning. While this is a master class video, uh, this will not be master class type of information. That will come later in the singular videos for each individual leader that everyone should probably take a look at. Uh, they will be coming every single day for the coming days. Uh, so if you are going to watch this video, thank you so much. Um, sit back, relax. And when it's over, if you did enjoy it, like, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys, the first unit I want to start here with on the UNSC guide here for Halo Wars 2, obviously going to be none other than the Marine. This is the basic core unit for the UNSC. Every single uh, UNSC faction uh, leader has them. Uh, they come out of your main base, your HQ, as well as every mini base and other HQ that you control. Their first upgrade that you can get before even teching up is the grenade throw, which is very good against clumped units. Uh, it works very well uh, against uh, light vehicles as well as uh, medium tier vehicles. Uh, once you hit Tech 2, their next upgrade is going to be the Combat Tech Marine. Now, this is a, uh, a few handy things. Number one, it adds this nice rocket launcher dude that you get uh, onto your squad. Uh, he does great damage versus everything, but especially air. Your unit will now have the ability to heal uh, almost every vehicle in the game and your structures. And, of course, the Marine gets more DPS and HP overall. All right. Now, moving in to the Hellbringer. This unit is very, very strong uh, and that is very good at taking out structures as well as every type of infantry unit in the game. Uh, they are very, uh, they're a lot, they are a little bit quicker uh, than Marines. Uh, they move, I think, at one speed faster than Marines do. And when a Hellbringer gets its Tech 2 upgrade, which is the dispersion nozzles, the fire on the ends of the guns will actually change to a bluish purple, as you guys just saw. That's why I was trying to drag out the explanation for this unit, waiting for that to change. <laughs> but yeah, as you saw, a regular Hellbringer will have red fire coming out of the gun. If you look closely, and if you um, are trying to see if the unit is upgraded or not, you just simply check to see the color of the flame. Blue means it's upgraded with dispersion, and red means it is not upgraded. Either way, this is a very, very strong unit for getting in and out of the action, taking in clumps of uh, other inf infantry types units in the game, uh, as well as doing nice hit and runs on structures. Now, moving on to the Cyclops. Uh, this unit is uh, pretty quick. It is a t it's technically a mech infantry unit, but it still counts as infantry So snipers and whatnot and rangers still do a lot of damage to it uh, This unit is based for uh, anti-vehicle, so uh, it does very well versus every single type of vehicle in the game uh, It's got an upgrade tier 3 called shock rounds uh, it adds the ability for this unit to slow down any vehicle that it hits. Allowing it to catch up, or the rest of your army to catch up to what you're shooting at. And for our next unit, it's going to be none other than the Sniper. Uh, this is a very, very nice unit, especially in the hands of someone willing uh, to micro it. Uh, this unit has one of the longest ranges in the game. The longest range, in fact, for an infantry unit. Uh, very strong versus every type of infantry in the game, obviously. 
Uh, it's got a tech to ability that it allows itself to cloak so it can actually uh, go in and out of battle without being seen as long as nothing's detecting it. Also, speaking of which, the sniper is able to detect other units. It's got a very, very large detection range to find those cloaked bases and units out on the field. The next unit is going to be the Ort Hog. Now, this hog is actually already having its tier 3 upgrade, which is the Gauss Cannon on the back there. It actually looks really sick. They did such a great job with the graphics on this game. I'll give them that. It's so pretty. <laughs> Uh, this is your tier 2 core vehicle unit. Uh, this is very good versus, uh, you know, just your general other vehicles, infantry. It does okay uh, versus structures. It's subpar versus air, but that's not really its job. It's just for the main DPS portion of your army uh, mid-game. If you don't build a lot of these, I would suggest just going straight into your Tech 3 vehicle. Once you hit Tech 3, instead of getting Goss, but if you already have a bunch of these in your Tech 3, feel free to get the Goss upgrade. Uh, it adds uh, quite a bit of utility to the vehicle. Uh, my favorite part of the Goss upgrade is the range uh, that it gives to the unit. Speaking of ranged units, now we're moving into this a behemoth. Uh, this is going to be the Kodiak. Now, this unit is going to be your artillery for the UNSC. Uh, while it's driving around, it actually has this little mini gun on the front that it uses. It's basically useless, mostly cosmetic, but it can take out very light infantry units or uh, maybe snipers or things or rangers if they're too close. Uh, once you've used your fly ability, it will lock down into its lockdown mode, giving it the uh, name Kodiak, which allows it to actually shoot extremely far and uh, do heavy amounts of damage to anything that it uh, strikes upon. Uh, a, bunch, a few of these lined up on some high grounds on any map uh, will allow you to take a fight uh, in full confidence knowing that your opponent will get rained down upon uh, before the fight even begins. Uh, this unit actually has some special abilities when in the hands of Anders and Serena, but stay tuned for those leader's guides uh, to get more detail on that. Now, of course, we move into the Jackrabbit. This is the main scout vehicle for the UNSC. Uh, you're able to build these out of your main base, just like Marines, just like Marines also. You can build them out of your mini bases. Uh, they're your main form of scout unit, as well as your early tier vehicle. They have the ability to uh, stutter step, which means you can click the ground and then click what you're shooting at over and over. And this unit will actually have an increased fire rate. Uh, basically, uh, the game developers are allowing micro to give you an advantage, which I'm okay with anyway. As long as, uh, as long as both controller and mouse and keyboard can do it, which they can, uh, which makes it okay. This uh, unit's upgrade is the support drone uh, that you get from your main base. It costs 450 yellow. It allows this unit to uh, have detect. It's actually got a very, very large detection radius as well as view radius. Uh, the support drone also does a little, adds a little bit more DPS to the unit, shooting a little mini gun on it. Uh, and uh, most importantly, this allows the unit to heal itself out of combat. Moving on to our next unit, the Wolverine. Now, this is going to be your main anti-air vehicle uh, for the UNSC. This uh, unit is very fast. It does substantial damage to air, has no special abilities. However, it does its job just fine. Just make sure you get those vehicle upgrades to allow it to dish out a lot of damage as well as take it. Moving into our next unit, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Tier 3 core vehicle for the UNSC. This is the Scorpion tank. Now, this unit uh, has been through some, uh, some tough past. It was buffed, debuffed, buffed, debuffed, buffed, debuffed uh, throughout the seasons, but now I feel it's in a very strong position. It, it does a lot of uh, damage to basically anything it can hit. Its little mini gun absolutely shreds uh, light infantry. Its cannon does devastating damage to all types of vehicles and structures. And uh, I'm happy to say that the Scorpion tank is a staple in the Halo Wars 2 UNSC late game. 
All right, now moving into, oh, and also the Y ability, the special ability for the tank is of course the canister shells or canny as it's called amongst players. Uh, what this does is it fires off a single shot that does explosive damage in a large radius uh, to other units. Now, this unit actually has a spe uh, even more special uh, ability with Isabel, but stay tuned for the Isabel leader guide uh, for more information on that. Next up, uh, we have the first core air unit for the UNSC. It's going to be the Hornet. This unit is uh, very fast. It does a lot of damage. Uh, it's kind of uh, not very tanky, obviously. It's a it's very light air unit, but it gets in. It does a lot of DPS, and once it hits tank three, you get Wingman, which allows it to do more damage to anything that you're shooting at, uh, as well as giving it some more combat effectiveness overall, HP damage, and all that. Once this unit has all of its air upgrades and has some uh, support, uh, it's very, very devastating, especially if your opponent is not ready uh, for air. Moving into our next unit, the Nightingale, named after Florence Nightingale, uh, one of the uh, big, uh, big-time nurses <laughs> that uh, is, is part of our century, and what this is actually named after. Uh, you can actually look her up uh, online if you're interested, but that's who this is named after, a nurse. It's actually kind of perfect because this unit heals. So, in the end, it ought to make sense. Anyway, so the Nightingale, uh, it can heal up to three units of structures at the same time, uh, using its little drones as long as it's close enough. Uh, this unit, uh, very good support unit. You want, it's kind of like that unit you have to have in all of your armies. It has the ability to detect as well. It is the main form of detect, in my opinion, in the UNSC arsenal, because you always have it. I mean, it's always good to have a, a couple of Nightingales, usually three to five in your army, depending on uh, what your total population is. Uh, and of course, it has the Y ability to smoke. Now, a lot of people I get questions about this. A lot of people don't know the smoke from the Nightingale. Now, how this works is any unit that is inside of smoke doesn't matter if it's yours, matter if it's your opponents, doesn't matter if you have either of you have detect. It does not matter if a unit is sitting inside of smoke. It cannot shoot out of it. Now. A unit that is in smoke is invisible unless detected. So, if you have a unit and it's inside of smoke, doesn't matter if it's your smoke or your opponent's smoke, if your unit is inside of it and your opponent does not have detect, they cannot see the unit inside of the smoke. Now, you can shoot at units inside of smoke as long as you're able to see them with detect. So, to put it shortly, units in smoke is usually a bad idea. Uh, if it's your own units because they can't shoot out. However, there are instances where you can try to save a unit using smoke by smoking your own unit if there's no detect nearby and putting the Nightingale inside the smoke as well to heal the unit. It happens with Spartans all the time, more than you might think. All right, moving into the big Mama Hama Jama. This is the Vulture from UNSC. The uh, main tier three air super duper battle unit uh this unit is what can i say it's good against literally everything probably except anti-air in large numbers and of course it has that phoenix missile y ability that basically one shots almost every unit in the game except for the very very high hp ones and anti-air units it no longer one shots reavers and wolverines with its phoenix missile which i think is very nice these are usually used to crack bases, so you get a bunch of these and you spam the Y ability, that Vulture Missile onto bases, to take it out. And, uh, yeah, that's probably what they're used for. Very good unit to have in the late game. And moving on finally to the last main core unit for the UNSC. That's right. It's the Condor. The Vulture's very, very big, mean brother. Caution is right, as you can see right there. Anyway, guys, so this is your super ultimate unit for the UNSC. Uh, you're able to build this once you are tech three at the price of 2,000 blue and 2,000 yellow. The ultimate unit does fly for the UNSC, as opposed to the Banished Scarab. Uh, 
uh, it's not the best versus uh, very fast moving targets such as Hornets and Banshees and maybe very fast moving ground targets. However, it does have this huge cannon underneath that you get to use with its Y ability. And its Y ability actually has um, a longer range than all the guns on it. So funnily enough, the Condor has three different ranges. Its main gun has a particular range, its lasers have a particular range, and then the Y ability has the longest range out of all of them being able to shoot quite far as long as you have vision. Speaking of that range, the uh, Vulture's Y ability shoots very, very far if you do have vision for it. But yeah, guys, that's going to be all the units for the UNSC. And uh, we can move now into the structures. Uh, we have the garage. This produces every single one of your vehicles. The Warthog, the Wolverine, the Kodiak, and of course, the Scorpion tank and your vehicle upgrades. Now, talking about uh, vehicle upgrades overall for the UNSC, uh, typically, um, you want to get your population upgrade first inside of your armory uh, before getting any uh, upgrades. Usually you want to get that 100, 100 population will nine times out of 10 beat a level one army of the same type. Uh, so getting that population upgrade is usually a much better idea. Uh, once you get your pot first population upgrade, you have two choices. You can go vehicle upgrade level one, vehicle upgrade level two, or go straight to tech three. Uh, and go for just a better unit overall. So say you're tech two, you're pumping hogs. You can go level two uh, vehicle and stay on hogs and then get level three later. Or you can go tech three and start building scorpion tanks. It really comes down to what you're doing, how well those core units are working out. So if you're doing really well with core units, still stick to them. Stick to your hogs, stick to your marauders, whatever it may be. And uh, just continue with them. And once you have the time and once you feel I had enough, go ahead and go tech three and get that goss upgrade. Moving on now to the barracks for the UNSC. You have the Hellbringers, the Sniper, Cyclops, as well as the infantry upgrades. You have the shock rounds that we talked about, active camo for the Sniper, and then the next upgrade after that will be your, um, uh, your Sniper shot, the Stanchion rounds, which allows your Snipers to actually slow down units that they attack. Actually, I think I forgot to mention that with the Sniper, the Stanchion rounds. Uh, yeah, they, they are... Uh, able to slow down other infantry that they hit. Moving into this is the air pads, this is where you're going to build your air arsenal uh, with a UNSC. You have your Hornet, your Nightingale, and as well as your Vulture. Of course, you have your generators. These provide your yellow. Always upgrade these guys. Having unupgraded generators is uh, never good in almost any scenario unless you're doing some sort of crazy build. Uh, your armory for the UNSC, this is where you're going to get your fortified base upgrades, your hero, uh, your condor gunship, your fortification, as well as logistics and, fort and uh, your population upgrades. I've used both, so they're no longer here. <clears throat> Supply pads. Uh, these were your main income, your main source of income come from for your blue. Uh, at the start of a game, you usually at least want to have one upgraded supply pad right away, as well as one upgraded generator, so keep that in mind. Uh, usually, uh, nine times out of ten, you'll have a bunch of pads. One will be upgraded and two upgraded gens. Uh, that is the standard before hitting tech two. And then, of course, you have your UNSC mini bases that you can build almost anywhere on the map, as long as there's a mini base available. And then, of course, the main building itself, the HQ. Uh, this is where you get your base upgrades. This is where you uh, get your upgrades for your uh, Marines, your rabbits, and this is where you can set your global rally point as well as lock uh, down the base, which will make sure that any units built don't actually come out, allowing you to go for a special transition. Huh? Other than that, I think that's going to be it for the UNSC uh, simple guide here. I hope this guys gave you some nice information as to the uh, simple um, information available for this faction. Stay tuned, guys. This is just a basic masterclass guide here uh, for the UNSC. And the real information will be embedded in the singular leader guides coming up next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is Yo Desla, and I'm out.